Morning guys, welcome back to the channel, Eugene Cousins here. All right, so today I'm going to be discussing carburetors and this kind of content and technical content is more on, on demand these days. And I think there's, um, uh, I think I'm just gonna have to do a whole series on this kind of, uh, this kind of topics just to make sure that enough of the pilots that are distributed over the country that don't have access to, um, <clears throat> to a dealer or an importer close to them, they have access to the correct information. So go ahead and like and subscribe this video so we can start building up some support for it for the channel. And then I'll do my best also to put out some more of these technical videos. All right, so I'm, I'm using the, the wondrous morning sun that we have today, bringing the machine outside instead of doing it inside uh, the shop. All right, so uh, we're going to be talking about carburetor, carburetor settings, how you install the carburetors, uh, the, the membrane kits, and then um, uh, tips to look out for. All right, let's get cracking. So this is the uh, this is the carburetor strip. This is the Walbro 37, and some of the things that you need to to be aware of um, when you do service the carburetor is, is as you take it off from the machine, uh, mount it. It looks like this. So if you're going to get into the servicing of this machine, you obviously remove the four bolts, and the carburetor is exposed. Now this is the little serve that needs to get serviced. That comes in the carburetor kit. When you order a carburetor kit from Nirvana, this is what it looks like. And you can see there's a little sieve over there. So how do you remove that little sieve? I use a box cutter because that's the finest tool I can get my hands on. And I basically just grip it and push it out. And there we go. All right, a little sieve like that. All right, when you reinstall it, you basically are you're just going to be pushing it back into place. And then you're gonna use the knife very gently, not poking any holes in it or anything like that, just to get it into position. It's not that important for me to do right now, but I usually just play with this until it's into position. So there's no, the point that I'm trying to make here is there's no glue um, or some form of thing that you're going to use to secure that sieve. It literally just gets pushed in. That is... That's the part of the carburetor that'll get jammed up with some dirt that comes, that's the first thing where the fuel comes through um, from the fuel tank. So, and that's most likely the thing that's gonna get jammed up with, with the debris coming up from the tank or that's passed through your filter. So making sure that that is replaced, that's your first port of call. All right, so you most likely might not see any, uh, any dirt or anything that uh, damage to the carburetor, when I say damage, I just mean that um, what can happen is over time is that you will get some water uh, accumulation inside your carburetor and that can cause some rust. Where you're going to be looking out for is underneath the carburetor plate and there you'll start seeing, you can see a little bit of residue still of uh, where I cleaned it out, that was actually quite thick uh, piled up over there and you've got to use feel and some form of scrubber like a toothbrush just to get all of this stuff out and then you can still see a little bit of the gasket pieces that are still in place. Um, you've got to try and clean this out and it is it is a cumbersome process to get that cleaned out and, and all, all in all to get it cleaned so you can replace the gasket. All right, so the most common problem that we're seeing from Walbro, the Walbro these days, um, I wouldn't say that it comes factory standard that the problems come, but you can see this is this is a carburetor plate that, that I have to fix. And I fix these carburetor plates by punching these things out and then installing new ones. If this thing sucks air, if you can turn your these nipples in any way like this that most likely it means that you are sucking air in there and I've actually delivered we've actually delivered a brand new machine to a customer and it started doing this and well at least he's he, the rough running on his engine was caused by this um, and we had to send him a new uh, top end carburetor plate and once that was done the, the issue was resolved so there should be no air leaking from these two things how do they get loose how do they loosen up well, when you remove the little the little plates, um, uh, the biggest the biggest uh, I would say thing that I've seen how pilots do that is that they just yank them off. They yank them off at an angle, and that's just enough to loosen or loosen the grip that these little uh, rivets have. Okay, so you wanna you you wanna use some form of propane lighter or just something that can produce heat directly onto those pipes to 
you know to to let them expand and then you gently pull them off i wouldn't say it's a good idea to use a knife and you can see what's happened on this cover to plate the customs actually used the knife when he replaced it and he made a little cut there on the nipple all right so the knife is obviously just a bit too sharp <laughs> and i've actually had a situation like this where the nipple had to be replaced because it was actually even with a cable tie and a new line and everything onto it it was still leaking air on this so these are the two biggest culprits that cause um, the, the engine uh, from not starting properly so make sure that these stay in good condition take uh, proper care in removing these lines that you don't cause that um, and uh, that goes uh, that goes for anything on the car it's a sensitive piece of kit so make sure that it's taken well care of so that's the top plate okay so all right we've covered this piece this part of it uh all right so the underneath piece you're going to remove the the what i call the second stage you're going to remove the four bolts take it off uh you'll most likely see that the carburetor uh those gaskets fall apart over time so keep in mind that the service intervals are should be 100 hours or 12 months not 100 hours over two years or something like that uh, the the erosion of the gaskets as they fall apart that's usually time or it's it's re it's related to the fact that as the fuel um, gets introduced to these gaskets they're going to start eroding over time and so it's both time and fuel related uh, and usage related that will cause this so if you're going to run 100 hours over six months replace it if you're going to run 100 hours over 12 months replace it um, but if it's just 12 months and just 10 hours replace it um, it's not a good idea to have these things harden up what happens to the membranes is they become very stiff hardened um, or they just uh, they they become incapable of performing their function as they should so that's why there's a there's a form of time relation to that and when you actually when you, when you actually pass due on this uh, I just removed one the other day. I did film it, but the lighting wasn't that great. So I had to, this is very fine stuff and it's not that easy to um, to show exactly how that all happens. But most likely if it's past due over 12 months and you pay, take this plate off and you start peeling this off, these gaskets just fall apart. Okay, so I think one of the biggest, biggest things, um, there's obviously more parts that uh that are that come into this and i'm going to show you guys how that comes into it but i'm going to just undo this for a second these two bolts here because you guys need to see what gasket is the correct one well, actually i don't even have to take it apart i'm just going to show you the the, the different gaskets and where a very big problem comes in now uh, for the life of me i don't understand why they put these double gaskets in here but you see this this carburetor the carburetor the Walbro 37 is designed for a 130 cc engine and so these engines just been bigger and bigger and bigger and we're using the same carburetor and so the, the, we just open up the needles and just push more fuel through it but it was actually designed for 130 cc so these parts you know they come for machines that are small um, and for big engines and this this is the two gaskets that come in a brand new kit now have a look at the difference maybe you can spot the difference but if you cannot um, let me point them out for you. You see this little, this little, uh, this little line over here. This little inlet over here. It's got two holes on both sides. That one's just got one. This, the one with the, the with the that's lacking that extra hole. That's the one that you don't use. You use the one with the two holes on both sides. Now, out of experience. I serviced the machine brand new, you know, all the parts are just, it's perfect, it's perfectly serviced. And there's two elements right out of the bat, out of the box, when the machine came to the customer, it's a, it's a tourist that was come flying with us. Uh, two things failed. The first thing failed was the primer pump. Now, I can't explain to you how the primer pumps can fail. Uh, I think these suppliers are obviously from China because they're crap. Uh, if they were made with some, some higher standard, then um, these things wouldn't fail. But brand new primer pump failed after installation. And basically, how do I know a primer pump fails? It's not the plastic or anything like that. It just doesn't function. It doesn't do its job. So when you push the primer pump, it's hard stuff. It's not pushing fuel through. Um, and I had to immediately replace that uh, as the customer was ready for takeoff. That's embarrassing, but it's got nothing to do with us as agents or, or, a, uh, or part suppliers. It's just the fact that these parts don't always function as they should um, if you got a working one <laughs> those could last for uh, three years or something i guess you know they not things that 
you know you're still going to replace it at the 12 month uh, 12 month or 100 hours but they uh, they are reliable if they work most of the time what happens is that you've got to replace the pump the the, the, the fuel pump um, out of a service period is the fact that fuel was stored in it you went away for a long time the fuel's been eating away at the the clear membrane of the fuel pump and um, a primer pump and it develops a crack or something like that okay let's get into the extra things here um let me show you guys these this is the other part that's very important okay so as you see the carburetor on the second stage here this pin this pin has to go in there obviously right i'm not going to show you guys the full assembly because if you open your carburetor you're going to see all of this anyway what i need to sh what i need to point out to you is the fact that this isn't all metal it looks like it's all metal but it's not that is a silicone tip right at the front and if this thing uh, most guys service the, the but because it looks such a, like a such a you know seesaw little complex thing with a spring sometimes they neglect to replace this you've got to replace this because it actually gets an indentation ring as it pushes onto that valve it's it's a valve and um that's that little ring indentation that that's caused gives you problems so you need to replace this whenever you do replace the carburetor kit okay very important Yeah. The sequence for replacing here is the opposite from the two different sides. If you're going to install the second stage gaskets, now remember you've opened up these two bolts, you've replaced that half moon one that I showed you, and now you're going to be replacing the gasket. So the, the, hard, the, the hard gasket comes first, and then the soft one comes last. Okay, we get the sequence right. So it's going to look like that. And then the cover plate comes over the top, obviously. Now, this is probably one of one of the biggest questions that comes my way. Is that guy, pilots want to they want to set the pop-up pressures and things like that? You see, there is no nipple there where the little seesaw hooks into. All right, have a look at that. See that? There's no nipple there. That gets shaved off or or. or um, it just grinded off by Nirvana, not by Walbra. Okay, so these kits get uh, get prepared by Nirvana before they are sent out to us. And a lot of guys order these kits directly from Walbra because it's cheaper, or from some agent that has the kits in stock that services other, you know, provides it to other machines. And 99% of the problems that I get with carburetors is that the guys get these uh, install these gaskets with the little nipple that's on top of that ring. Um, and uh, I'll see if I can find a picture of you but uh, for that because I don't deal with those Walbro kits so I might not have it on record but I'll have a look um, so it needs to be the correct one it doesn't hook into uh, the little fork and let me show you so this little thing let me try and hold that in my thick thumbs you see that's supposed to hook into a little nipple over here uh, it should be like that that grabs onto that and we don't do that in nirvanas okay um we got a computerized engine um and uh, we have a lot less hassle when it comes to carburetors you do not have to test for pop-up pressures and all those kinds of things you just need to install your carburetor or your membrane kits correctly and you need to make sure that that little ring is shaved is 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 actually been taken off okay All right, next step. If you're going to be installing this one, this little very thin gasket, that has to come over. You'll see that it actually makes sense. And, and, and always you can't, you can't really get this wrong because of the little hole indentations that you have there, they have to line up. And then comes the hard gasket that you're gonna be putting in place. Make sure that lines up correctly. Okay, so I always say to pilots, make sure that you Replace the gaskets in the order that you found them when you open up your carburetor. But that's always that's not always possible because they might have, or the previous owner or themselves might have screwed up the the the, the order of the gasket. So that's why I'm showing you guys the correct version. You always should see some form of indentation line. 
that is that is pressed if you can see that little line th those little lines they compress onto that in order to make a good seal okay the other thing about when you're taking off the carburetor um, and you installing it onto your machine you got to make sure that the gasket this section of it where it's going to go onto the machine so it should line up like this all right so the gasket has to be placed here and go into the machine so you put the two bolts through it if it's the air gasket like that one uh, when I say air gasket I mean it's the it's the air flight gasket or the rodeo gasket with the with the air filter gasket that goes I keep on saying gasket it's the air filter that comes onto it but you might have a silencer box and that is a very different story to install I'm not going to get into that it's just a, a long process and I most likely have to illustrate that so I I take all the silencer boxes off and I install these because of the visibility I can see my fuel lines I can see my primer lines I can see uh, if my carburetor is secure onto the car plate very important uh, and you know just for the guys that do a ton of flying the silencer box is just a little bit impractical I'm talking about if you fly 100 to 200 hours a year okay so make sure the gasket is correctly installed so just put it in the right place you put your bolts through these as it's going to go into the carburetor now it's going to go like that into it. The gasket's going to be on this side all right and then you hook the, the gasket over those bolts and then you apply lock tight on both those bolts and then you screw it into the gas the, the 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 suction plate or the car plate what's important about this is the fact that it's not a heavy torque system you're not trying to secure those bolts with enormous amount of pressure or how much pressure is required to so 22 newtons what is it it's not a pressure system it's the loctite that holds the bolts in place so it's light pressure and the loctite needs to be generously applied to both sides and comes onto the machine so it's important to, to remember these things okay all right now we're going to get into the settings i already have i removed the low screw here but there's supposed to be a tiny screw here um, show you a close up on the machine in a second you can see the low screw there but the reason why I've got it removed is, is to try and show to you guys when you do service one of these things you got to remove both the needles because sometimes um, dirt can get stuck at the very tip of these needles where it's supposed to let the the fuel through and you've got to be sure that there's nothing there that could cause any problems I've serviced some of these things where that was the cause where the, the carburetor wasn't or the engine wasn't functioning right it was just dirt st um, stuck on the tip of those those needles all right you go to the manual settings for the carburetor that the for your altitude uh, it's page 33 on the manual for the instinct I'm not sure what pages are on the airflight I haven't used the manual to, to check that in a long time but basically you've got three settings indicated uh, the one that has the most open um, indication for for these needles um, would be for the lowest possible altitude so to explain that uh, is a column of air if you can think about a column of air going down from space down to earth and the heaviest air is obviously as the air gets compressed at the surface of the earth um, so at the coast is where we measure that is 101, 1013 uh, hectopascals so um, basically what you've got is you want to have the, the heavier the air the more oxygen there is the more fuel you want to um, have uh, a to, to mix with that amount of air so as you go up higher altitudes you have a reduction of the amount of oxygen available and so you have to reduce the amount of air and that's why the engines run rough you set it at coast you go back up to high altitudes and the engine doesn't want to run right it's because there's too much fuel um, for the, the amount of oxygen available so the the furthest of the two settings the one is for the coast the one is for high altitudes what do i mean with high altitudes that's 5500 feet or 5000 feet and above um, that setting would apply to that and the mid setting is usually for the guys that are somewhere between you know somewhere between like a thousand or up to three and a half thousand or something like that okay um now some this is the the idle screw so this is where you set your idle now important to know that you will never get your carburetor to function correct on a nirvana unless it's producing the right amount of idle on the 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 200 cc you need to run 2400 2450 rpm and on the 230 it's 2850 rpm round about there it doesn't have to be on the spot the, the the 230 idles higher because it's small carburetor and you need to get more fuel for that engine so it idles higher to suck that out so 
keep in mind here that um, you've got you got your fuel line coming in as it's connected to you can see on the side here your fuel line comes in here all right your main fuel line sucking up from the tank from here you've got your suction hose that comes in how that operates is that as you prime the fuel comes into the two primer nipples and that actually forces the fuel in for your ignition the engine starts now as the engine starts there's crank pressure that is producing a vacuum and that then it's basically these two nipples are cut out of the picture and the engine becomes self-sufficient with uh, the suction of some the pump gets pushed out of uh, the primer pump gets pushed out of the equation and the suction hose takes over in producing the fuel so if you've got a leak in one of your few little primer lines you still have a problem with the the engine running these need to be fixed you know need to work at all times um, and um, even if you've got a broken primer uh, primer pump or something like that you are you are heading into a world of hurt so you've got to make sure that all the functions are interacting correctly but this is why you don't need to keep pushing your primer your fuel primer now if you catch yourself in a flight ever where you're flying and suddenly the engine starts you know dying on you and you have to use the primer pump to keep it going i've been in a situation like that then there's something wrong with then you know there's something wrong with the rest of the engine either the suction hose is not doing its job if there's not enough crank pressure there's a leak in the engine there's a leak in your head uh, from your any of those gaskets are not functioning correctly it could be a loose head nut or anything like that that is causing the fact that the suction or the vacuum is not correctly uh, introduced here so that's that's the different systems that you've got to keep be mindful of all right, let's go over settings. The sequence you're going to start it is as you as you fire up the machine, you're going to look out for the RPM, make sure it's correct. Then you start with a low setting. So you put the machine back again, and if you had both on the standard setting that you guessed is correct for your altitude, then on the low setting the procedure will be if you after about 30 seconds of idle, if you give it a response on the throttle and it has a dead spot, it's going, oh, it's just, oh, it just doesn't want to go up at all and it feels like it's going to, it wants to die. That means it's too lean. So then you're going to open it up at very small increments. So opening it up. So if you have a look at this, um, the best way to know if you've got the right is anti clockwise and clockwise. So obviously when you open it up, you've got to turn it clockwise. So but the problem with our carburetors is that with the 230 it's the it's pointing like this and with the 200 it's pointing like this and it's difficult to see which side you're going to turn to or for some people it is so you've got to make sure that you do your settings correctly and to know if the, if the spring goes in you're closing it you're leaning the engine that's the best way to remember it so basically you just got to you see that you're turning it clockwise and that basically is closing up the needle okay so to lean it out, you turn it clockwise. To open it up, you go anti-clockwise. So with the L setting is, if it's a dead spot, then you open up the needle a little bit at small increments until it's it's almost, it's what we call four stroking, is it's got a little bit of a rough run. So it's it has to be smooth, but if it goes, ha, 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 that just means it's got a little bit of extra fuel that's coming towards it. And if the engine is brand new, that's what you're gonna face right in the beginning. So get it to uh to to be as smooth as possible but have no dead spot so if you're pushing on the throttle it's got to have an immediate response um and this the l setting is from zero to obviously to up to 3500 rpm so it basically just covers the idle and the response the high setting is not something that you are going to feel a response on so if you're th unless it's opened up way too much then if you open it up it just doesn't have power it might have some rough run into it over three and a half thousand rpm so to know and to, to to the best thing to do with this is if you're going to go onto a standard setting that you've guessed is correct for your altitude that's most likely going to work for you the more power you want the more you got to lean the high setting out however a full 360 turn is the very limit that you have access to on the uh, the high setting on the 230 if you're going to go below a full turn open on the 230 you are risking a seize on the engine um, so having more power is great but running the risk of overheating the engine is not so good so make sure it's a little bit rich a little bit less power but you you're not running a risk of seizing the engine um, and then you could just got to play between uh, you know if if you feel that there's any bit of rough running throughout the rpm range then you're just going to lean it a bit it can't be too rich it'll be too lean then you just reach it uh sorry 
it's too rich you've got to lean it so uh, and then basically so you're just going to lean it a little bit until uh, it produces the the smooth rpm and enough power all the way through the range okay so what i'm going to do now is i'm going to go over the cold start sequence of the air flight and i'm doing that because uh, some customers are telling me that they not 100 percent sure what is the correct startup sequence for the air flight i'm doing the cold start sequence as cold as it gets all right so throttle my hand put the master switch on now what i want to do is if you guys can see that i'm now priming the engine until i can see the fuel drip next to my left foot okay I'm turning this way so you can see i hope you hope you can see it now there's no amount of priming that you could do to flood the engine on an air flight on a on a nirvana any one of the nirvanas i'm just going to set this a little bit lower okay there's no amount of flooding that you could do that could cause the uh, priming that you could do that can flood the engine the reason why that is is because the way the way the carburetor is set up it's 90 degrees or perpendicular to the cylinder so as you prime it just runs out of the air filter and that's why i say you prime until the fuel drips onto the ground the only, only time that you could flood a nirvana is if you're pulling or pushing on the throttle lever while you're priming because then you're opening up the valve the butterfly valve and the fuel runs into the cylinder and that's how you flood a nirvana and then you're going to take the spark plug out in order to get it to go all right you don't want to do that and also as you start the engine you do not touch the throttle lever this is very different from what other guys do with their engines so this is why you've got to remember what the nirvana startup sequence is so it's done that it's going to start and it's going to die immediately all right sorry i was gonna usually what happens is if you start i've obviously primed enough what is the the goal of the priming is that you're pushing the, the all the air out of the carburetor and uh, basically is if, if there's no bubbles in the fuel lines then you will have a very smooth start sequence but most likely what will happen is, is you prime it you didn't prime enough it starts the engine but it dies immediately and now you've got to just prime it again so what i'll do right now I'll just prime it again even though it's unnecessary and then i start up again and then basically um it should run but even if you have a little bit of a problem there that it just doesn't want to run right or it's just on the verge of not uh, of wanting to die you keep your hand on the primer pump and you prime while the engine is running and it's that little bit of a rough run it doesn't want to go too nicely you keep priming and then you want to push the engine just out of the L setting on the carburetor into the high as soon as it reaches three and a half thousand five and three and a half thousand uh, rpm and above there will be a, you know your problems are over it, there's no way that you're going to have problems with the carburetor unless there's something wrong so i'm just going to do that again keeping my hand on the primer bulb can't go up all the way because it'll suck in my speed bar lines and then i'll have some other problems to worry about all right guys that's pretty much the sequence if you've got any questions post them in the comment box and i'll try and answer them